Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to JWF Summer Fest. I am your host, Silver Spoon, joined as always by the man with the plan for the greatest shindig of the summer. It's Captain T. That's right, Sills. I may have scar tissue over 98% of my body tonight, but that's not going to stop me from watching this spectacular event. That's right, Tibbs. And we are starting off with a match about this man. The man who, of course, did result in the sustained injuries to your body. Because, of course, last week, it, Momoa Curry, our champion, he was pronounced dead but he found a resurrection through through your form, Tibbs. How did it feel to be possessed? Well, Sills, it was a pain greater than any man could possibly know. And it, listen, once you've been possessed by an equivalent being to yourself, you'll never really understand the feeling. Let's just say that. <laughs> But here's the real question, Tibbs. I mean, this man, Honeypot, we saw him destroy Momoa Curry. He was pronounced dead. Do you think, do you think the champ's really coming back tonight? Sills, I felt him. I know it was him. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, what? What? Tibbs, it's him. It's him! It's the god of law, the god of the sea, and the entire god of the JWF, Momoa Curry has risen! Did you see how he crashed through the roof like a meteor and landed like the Terminator? He is a Terminator and he is hoping to get in this ring and terminate Honeypot. The man who has been the demon, let me say, who has been on a quest to take that JWF championship away for his master, a man who we learned was Momoa Curry's brother. Dibs, you got to give me the backstory. I still don't understand. Oh, well, Curry's brother, uh, of course. Basically, another god, kind of a little bit, and also uh, his greatest adversary. A horrible threat to Earth, mankind, and all living things. Uh, that's basically it. Wait, you're telling, you're telling me that this this god thing—that's not a, this isn't just a fun outfit. You're telling me this is real? Yeah. I, you should have noticed by now, Sylv. I'm honest. I wasn't even trying to pull anything over on anyone. This is just real life, bud. Well, I gotta say that that's raising the stakes for this match quite a bit as Momoa Curry faces off against the Demon Honeypot in a quest to keep his brother at bay. And let me tell you something, Momoa Curry, he is resurrected, almost become Momoa the White. And I think that he is on his way to a successful defense. Ladies and gentlemen, the following match is for the JWF Championship. In the left corner, he is the Beast, the Demon, a Holy Pot. And in the right corner, he is the God of Law, God of the Sea, and your JWF World Heavyweight Champion, Momoa Curry. All right, Tibbs, and there it is, the handing off of that title, that title that you've said possesses power behind all imagination, crafted from the idols of gods, holding high! Shibby! You see, Sills, there's a reason that Shibby is the only referee we have. He's the only mortal being that can actually hold the championship in That's just right. any no, Wait, oh my god! Yes! Momoa Curry with a 
fisherman spear from out of nowhere. Oh my God. The demon lying prone, but he looks like, looks like Momoa's getting ready for a second one, but no, Honeypot dodging out of the way and Momoa Curry went across this ring like a gunshot, Tibbs. That's right, Sills. Momoa Curry has not only been reborn in spirit, that is a 100% new body there, by the way. That's right, and it lands a beautiful suplex. Honeypot being forced to roll to the outside. Now Momoa going to that top rope, testing out that body, but wait! He's got him! Honeypot's got him by the throat for a big choke slam. And let's not forget that choke slam right there. It's what landed Momoa Curry in the hospital. It is what led to his demise. And let me tell you something, it might not, it might be a brand new body, but it might already be broken at the hands of Honeypot. Oh, possibly, so I did tell you that Honeypot is a horrible threat to all of human existence Ooh, as well. But Momoa kicking out at three. Honeypot arguing with Shibata back and forth, but it looks like he's setting up, setting up for a second choke slam. And God or not, I don't know if Momoa Curry, ooh, who fights out, I don't know if he can survive. It. I don't know, Sills. It's it's uncharted waters tonight with Momoa Curry and his new body. That's right. And oh, big drop kick from Honeypot sends Momoa to the ground. Rolling to the outside is the god of the JWF. And now Honeypot giving chase and now just wailing on him on the outside. But Momoa fighting back and whipping him into our guardrail. And now Momoa Curry picking up Honeypot, slamming him. And it looks like the demon is bleeding, Tibbs. Momoa Curry. He died, he fell through fire and water, and now he has come back to save us all. All right, now going for a roll up, not a, not a, not what I expected from Momoa. Oh, and Honeybot kicking out. Mm, at that point, it's just mind games that Momoa Curry's playing. That's right, but it doesn't appear to be working on Honeypot, who just slams Momoa into that corner, whipping him across the ring and a big clothesline to the god. And now Tyrone for that choke slam once again. And he's got him, got him by the throat. But he's got the elbows once again. He's got it scouted. And oh my God! It looked like Momoa was going for a spear, but instead gets that tilt a whirl sidewalk slam to the earth. And now Honeypot just trying to figure out what to do next, Tibbs. Hmm. Honeypot strangely winded here. He, you can see that this new form of Momoa has really worn him down in ways that you don't see a lot. That's right, and oh, there it is! That choke slam, center of the ring, one! No! Oh, Momoa, Momoa kicking out before Shibata's hand can count two, and Tibbs, I gotta say, Honeypot is pissed. Ah, uh, you know, Sills, in any normal situation, I would agree I'd be pissed at somebody kicking out at one, but this is, this is Momoa Curry! Momoa Curry showing his stuff! Showing us what he can do. This is our God That's... of Law, God of the Sea, and God of the best damn wrestling company you've ever seen. Get him, Momoa. Get him. That's right, but unfortunately, Honeypot fighting back once again. Big kick to the gut. And now, both of them trading those blows back and forth. It's a battle of gods and demons right here in a JWF ring. Momoa Curry now struggling, going back into that corner. It looks like he's setting him up for it. That move he knows all too well. The Momoan punch in the center of the ring. Momoa desperately covering for that pinfall. One, two, oh, and barely kicking out is Honeypot. And Tibbs, let me tell you something. I gotta say, I think you're right. I think this new form of Momoa has winded Honeypot in a way we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. I'm also worried a little bit now, though. It's going to take Momoa Curry a little bit of time to get used to his new body, his new physical form. That's right. Now picking up Honeypot once again. And now tossing him into the turnbuckle. Going for, oh no, picking him up on the top rope. Big shot to the face. Momoa going high risk right now. Climbing to the top rope, picking up Honeypot by the neck for a beautiful superplex into the center of the ring. Momoa taking some time to get back to his feet, but oh, wait a minute. 
Momoa, he's in the corner. He's in that place. That place we've seen him go to so many times from the spear. A spear in the center of the ring, Tibbs. Yes. That's the power. That's the pain. That's the punishment. Give it to him. Oh, it hurts. That's right. Now wait. Momoa picking him up once again. I think he's aware. I think he's aware of the fact that it's going to take more than that. Bouncing off the ropes, charging up, but no! Tried to go for the spear once again, but Honeypot blocks it with the knee. And Tibbs, let me tell you something. You saw the speed he was getting. And now Honeypot's got him by the neck, but he's got him. And a spear! Breaks out of the choke slam. It's the spear. One, two. Oh, and that two and three quarters Honeypot got out. And Tibbs, I think Momoa Curry cannot be happy right now. Sales, I wouldn't be either if I had just failed at putting away one of the greatest possible threats to all of your existence. That's right. Now Honeypot once again. Big clothesline sending Momoa to the ground trying for that choke slam once again. Do you think that's a wise move? Do you think you should possibly go for that pile driver instead? Because it seems like Momoa does have that choke slam scouted. Oh, you know, all it takes is a couple of times for Momoa Curry to get used to something. And I don't think that choke slam gives as much That's right. go as it used to. Oh, but unfortunately, Ooh. he went for it again, allowing Momoa to break free, hit the spear, and get the pinfall. Yes. And Tibbs, let me tell you something right now. I was afraid. I was afraid for Momoa Curry in this last month. But the god has risen, and he has defeated the demon known as Honeypot. And Tibbs, I gotta say, I'm glad as hell to see Momoa Curry back. Damn right, Sills. He's back better than ever. And it's gonna be a hell of a challenge for anyone trying to take his throw. That's right, and there's that fisherman spear. But I mean, let's not forget, this still shows the resiliency of Honeypot, who withstood several spears in the center of that ring. If he faced anyone other than this Momoa Curry, this fresh Momoa Curry, I'd be afraid for the title, but not today. Hey everybody, Captain Tibbs here, Commissioner of the JWF, and I'm here today to tell you about merch.aloadofpurebs.com slash fightboys, where you can find all of your great eight merchandise for the JWF superstars that you love the most. Here we have t-shirts, tumblers, whatever you could want, you, where you can support your favorite superstars. We have things like the Blake Tanner anti-underdog shirt. We have the Captain Tibbs shirt with my beautiful face on it. Something with the JWF logo. Are you a fight boy or a fight girl? Doesn't matter, we got shirts for them both. And of course, my favorite, the Fight Boys Tumbler Glass. You can put anything in it, even Captain Tibbs' special drink. Whatever you want, fight it over at merch.aloadofpurebs.com and look for the Fight Boys section. All right, Tibbs, and it is now time. Time for a match for the title. Yep, yep, yep. Shut up because the VWO is coming out. I don't give a shit about them because it's time. It's time for the main event. It's time for the thing you all wanted to see. The Hammer Man. The Hammer Man, the greatest savior of humanity. The man who's going to bring it all together. The man who's going to steal all of our hearts, all of our minds, and all of our happiness and give it right back tenfold. It's the Hammer Man. The Hammer Man and his brothers are out here. The Hammer Man is going. The Hammer Man is going to destroy this little by you bastard. That's right, Tim's paying tribute to his time in the VWO, wearing his old Travis Clouds gear is the Hammer Man. But who knows how he will react as he faces off against the man who took his title so unceremoniously a few weeks ago, and that is this man. The man known as he, the B, Blake Tan. Uh, the dynasty has started to become a thorn in my side, and I have honestly not been here to address it in a rightful way because I've been worried about humanity. 
But look at what they've become. Look at what the BS have done. Look at what Scotty Moore has taken his former, or his partner, Blake Tanner, his father, Scott Moore, and done to them. He's not even letting the challenger, he's not letting his champion cohort, the man that's actually in the match, Blake Tanner, come out front and center. What the hell is that? That's right, and let's not forget, let's look at Blake, a man who used to be known for wearing plaid in the ring, kind of having a relatable look. Instead, almost seems like Scotty's dressing him himself, wearing the black and red Scotty's known for, wearing the leather jacket. Scotty Moore is purely in control, and, and Tibbs, I hate to see it. I know, Sel, this is, this is not what I wanted to see. I either of these young superstars and honestly Scott Moore he should know that I've known him for a long time that's right and I mean like you said Tibbs let's go back a year if you had told us we'd be in this spot in a spot where Blake and Scotty would be the reviled team over the VWO I don't think I'd believe you ladies and gentlemen the following match is for the JWF Captain's Championship in the left corner, he is one third of the VWO, the Hammerman. And in the right corner, accompanied by the Dynasty, it is he, the B, your JWF Captain's Champion, Blake All right, Tibbs, and there it is. The title that is your namesake, the JWF Captain's Championship. It's been held by that man, held by the Dylan. Hold it high, Shimmy. There he is. It feels weird to do that two times in a row. I don't know if my voice is going to last, to be honest with you. Oh, this is the only time you got it. Last, last time you got to do it, right? That's right. I mean, let's, that just shows what kind of a stacked card this is. That we're starting off with two championship matches back to back. Yep. Well, so to be honest, I really needed to get the fate of humanity out of the way first. And then this, of course, was going to be main event caliber anyway. So just threw it right after. That's right. Now, Hammerman fighting back was going for a hammer boot early in the match. Blake Tanner wisely avoiding it because that hammer boot, that's won him the title before. Of course, Silt. Anything the Hammerman does can win him the title. Honestly, Silt, have we not gone over this? That's all right. Meanwhile, Blake Tanner now beating him into the corner, but Hammerman fighting back with a kick to the gut. Oh, went for the hammer boot again, dodging it. Both of these men full of reversals. I mean, the history of the VWO and the BS, it goes back a long way. These men know each other so well, Tibbs. And honestly, Sills, I would be surprised if you had told me that the only team in here that has won a title, that has won a match, that has won their salvation through the power of love, I would have laughed if you told me it was the VWO. That's right, but a big hammer kick takes down Blake Tanner. Hammerman dragging him back to the center of the ring. Going for an early pinfall on the B. What? Oh! Before Shibata's hand can kick the mat, Blake Tanner kicking out. And I think the Hammerman realizes this is going to be a little bit tougher than he thought. Well, of course it is, Sills. This is one of the Hammerman's greatest challenges he's ever faced. This is Blake Tanner, one of our longest reigning JWF world champions. He held on to my special world championship belt for a long ass time. So you should never discredit him. Ooh, but. but with that big DDT into the hardest part of the apron, the hammer man may have just got the advantage he needed to get his title back tonight. What do you think? See, so the hammer man's on such a whole nother level. He embodies the pure badassery that we need to see. I mean, he fights in jeans, for God's sake. Look at him. That's right. Now, if we look, the Hammerman, he's in the danger zone. Scotty Moore, Scott Moore, the dynasty are right there, surrounding him like wolves. Meanwhile, Blake, 
Oh my god, with a European uppercut on Griffin. Now a second one on Justin. Blake Tanner wisely taking out the VWO. Well, this is oh no, wait a minute. Certainly unsuspected. Wait a minute. Big bee sting to Griffin. But it's allowed Hammerman to get the advantage, picking up Blake and just crossing him against the side of the apron. And Tibbs, let's not forget, I think Blake is aware of the fact that the Dynasty are his best allies in this match. If it were not for the Dynasty, Blake would not have that title around his waist right now. And I think he knows the VWO are there to try to counteract it. Of course, it feels like Blake Tanner wanted to make a statement to the VWO for the rest of them, but honestly, I, I, I don't understand what the logic was behind it. It left him in just completely open for an attack from the hammer man. All right, but Blake wisely giving him a big slam, climbing to the top rope, could be going for that elbow drop that Blake has come to be known for, and he nails it in the center of the ring. The hammer man clutching at his chest, going for the pin, one, two. Oh, and hammer man kicking out at two, Tibbs. Oh, of course he's kicking out at two, so it's it's just into the match. There's no way that the Hammer Man, the man that controls the power of hammers, is going to be beaten by something like that so quickly in the match. It, is that his thing? I thought he was just like, I thought he was just like, liked hammers. I didn't know he had the power of hammers, but wait a minute. Oh my God! Scotty Moore taking advantage of Shibata. Shibata being downed. Coming in, attacking the Hammer Man with that big reverse SMG. Yeah. Why did he fall over? Well, now it looks like he's going to the outside. Now he's going after the VWO, attacking Griffin. And now going after Justin. Meanwhile, Blake with a pinfall one. Oh, Hammer Man kicking out at one, but Scotty's still going crazy. And Shibata, Shibata's done it. He's forced to call for it. Scotty Moore has been thrown from ringside, Tibbs. Mm-hmm. So as I told Shibata before this match, anything funny happens between them, throw them out. That's right. And Hammerman, meanwhile, landed a beautiful shining wizard. Going for the pinfall on Blake Tanner. One. Oh, and Blake kicking out at one once again. Blake proving why he was one of the longest reigning champions of all time. But Hammerman setting up for the move that was formerly known as the big vape and boot, but Blake manages to avoid it. And now both of these men trying to jockey for position. Of course, Silza. How can you stand up to the power of pure hammers, though? I mean, having something steal just smack you in the oh, face. Wait, 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 wait. He's got him. He's got him. Beasting in the center of the ring. And oh no. Blake Tanner backing up, setting up for it. The Blake out! Straight to the skull of the hammer and going for the pinfall. One, two, oh! He kicked out the hammer man. He kicked out of it, Tibbs. I can't believe it. So that, a, that, that stomp, the Blake out is a horrible move. It can break a normal person's neck, but he's not facing a normal person. That's right, but Blake once again mocking the hammer man on the top rope, hitting a second elbow drop. Going for the pinfall. Oh, and Hammerman barely kicking out. Shibata's hand was about to count three tips. The Hammerman, he was not in a good position, but look at that. He was able to reverse it. Now he's got control of Blake Tanner. He's kicking him and, oh no. No, both of them fighting back once again. Like I said, these two men, they know each other. They know their move sets. They know what has to be done to beat the other. And that leads to some of the most interesting matches, I gotta say, Tibbs. A lot of good sequences right here, Sills. I'm gonna be honest, I, I'm not a fan of what the Dynasty is doing, but I've always enjoyed Blake Tanner. But I love the Hammer Man, and I, I know that he can truly show us what a real captain's champion should be. That's right. Blake was trying to, I think, toss Hammer Man to the outside, but Hammer Man fighting back, and a wait, going for it, a second shining wizard in the center of the ring. And now backing up, possibly trying to go for it. Oh, and Blake has it scouted so well, avoiding the hammer boot. Oh, but wait a minute, Blake reversing, big clothesline from the B. And let me tell you something, I think, I think at this point, I think the hammer man's nervous, Tibbs. I think he's worried, he, he's worried he's thrown his best shots at Blake. 
and it's not done well for him as Blake lands a beautiful DDT onto the apron. That's so sick. That definitely won't do a man good. That's that's right. Oh, and let's geez. not forget, that's the same place Hammer DDT'd him earlier today. So, I mean, at that point, I think Blake was thinking turnabout was fair play. What do you think? You know, Sills, I, I completely understand that feeling. I think it makes logical sense, and the Hammer Man's bleeding. I'm kind of scared. That's right. Oh, but wait a minute. Blake was going for the elbow drop. Hammer Man wisely getting out of the way, and he sets him up for a third shining wizard. But now, Hammer Man, Hammer Man doing the wise move, climbing to the top rope. Going for the hammer leg. Oh my god! Before he could land the hammer leg drop, Blake popped up out of nowhere, hit the super kick. One, two, three! With a super kick. And Tibbs, after catching the hammer man out of midair with that vicious super kick, nearly taking his hat off, Blake Tanner has retained the JWF. Captain's Championship. I got a, a vicious move out of nowhere, popping up like a like a trap. I've never seen that from Blake Ten. That's right, Tibbs. And I mean, let's not forget the Dynasty. They're still here. They have almost every single championship in the JWF: the Tag Team Championships, the Captain's Championship, and Scotty Moore with that cash in the bag briefcase. I'm afraid. We may see the Dynasty holding all of those titles sooner than later. What do you think? That fills me with fear beyond measure, Selves. Look good with it, though. This summer, two men save the world. From who you ask? Everything invading robo penises this show is not about those two men <laughs> this show's just a load of bs the show where blake tanner and scotty moore make up dumbass movies like that we're your personal think tank we're your two white guys which fills the quota for a <laughs> podcast i think and we're just gonna be here to have a good time and talk about sauerkraut. That's right, except no substitutes, ladies and gentlemen, because this is that pure, uncut PS. <laughs> good, good, uncut. All right, Tibbs, it's now time to go from a match that was family versus family to a match that, well, your family is involved in as your son, Chuck, teams up with the Dylan to face these men, the Canadian crew. You know what, Sills? I just seen a bunch of ball of bastards. A bastard of ball, if you will. This utter insignificant piece of Canadian leaf trash is coming down to my ring. He's thinking he can step up to my son. He brought this huge wet redwood. But you know what? We've got a redwood of our own here in the JWF. And that is the Dylan. And we've also got a huge, well, dare I say, it's just one of the best contenders ever, in my son, Chuck Tibbs. That's right, Tibbs. Let's not forget, this all started one month ago where there was a vicious, fatal four-way between Momoa Curry, your son, Chuck, the Dylan, and Felix Ball for the JWF Championship. The following night, Felix Felix couldn't accept the fact that he had lost that match and went on to attack your son, Chuck, leading to the Dylan, of course, coming out to his rescue, which led oh, to you making... Oh, look at him. He is, he is a boy. He's a fun, that loving boy right there. Oh, he's so excited. Couldn't be more proud of him. The Dylan doesn't look like he's putting up with it well, though. That's right, Tibbs. I mean, let's not forget the Dylan and Chuck, they've not always been on the best of terms. In fact, last month, they were they were at each other's throats in that match for that opportunity to become JWF champion. And the only alignment I really see between them right now 
is their hatred of the Canadian crew. What do you think? Well, Sills, I think the hatred for the Canadian crew is a very strong hatred indeed. As a matter of fact, um, I'd say it will break all boundaries and it will lead to, um, it will... Yeah, Tibbs, I was, a, I was about to say, speaking of breaking, unfortunately it looks like your son is quickly being broken by the man known as the Lumberjack, that seven foot Redwood in the ring with Chuck right now, just dragging him to the center, Tibbs. Of course, the, the Lumberjack, a, a massive, uh, a massive hell of a man who's just, uh, I've heard it said that he's just kind of coming in here because he feels like he could be used better. That's right, and oh my God, just tossing Charlie by the neck. Dylan trying his best to get his partner back into it, but unfortunately, Lumberjack wisely taking Charlie, ch tossing him to the other side of the ring, but Charlie, Chuck fighting back. Oh, big shots to the ribs. Let's see how he's gonna, oh no. I think he was gonna try to follow it up with possibly a, a, a DD Tibbs, but instead, Lumberjack just wrenching on the back, but Chuck manages to get to the ropes. Lumberjack, he could do great things if he wasn't under the thumb of that pestilence in my ring right now, Felix Ball. That's right. I mean, the history between Felix Ball and the Tibbs family, it's long, it's history. It's because of Felix Ball that you are not allowed back in Canada, Tibbs. Mm -hmm. He took everything from me. Everything that I loved used to be in Canada. Oh! And then I couldn't go anymore. That's right, and unfortunately, big shot to the face from the Lumberjack and Tibbs. I know he's your boy. I know he's had some great matches in the past, but it just doesn't seem, it doesn't seem like he can, oh, big log roll. He, he can't really get anything behind him right now. Oh, it's because he's very psychologically uh, scarred when it comes to facing the Lumberjack. The Lumberjack, of course, has defeated him on many occasions, and uh, I, I just think that my son's got a, a little mental block that thinks that he just can't beat the Lumberjack. I really thought about this a lot, so... Well, I mean, Tibbs, let's not forget, we like to talk about Felix Ball's relationship with the Lumberjack, but Felix Ball had nothing to do with him making it into this company. The Lumberjack debuted because of Chuck. He's the one who brought him into this company. Oh, of course. It, it was uh, going to be a real good team thing, and then my son didn't deal with it so well. So, you know, he was a different person back then. I, I forgive him. That's right. Now both of them. I mean, like you said, he was a different person. He was once known as Canada Charlie. Oh, wait a minute. He's got him. Got him in the captain's hook, but Felix Ball immediately breaking it up wisely. I think Felix is aware of what that captain's hook can do to the legs. And when you've got that massive redwood in front of you, the best advice I could give you is to cut out the legs. Oh, of course. Taking the legs out for a huge competitor like the Lumberjack. It is definitely going to be your first priority smaller guy. Never tell you about the time I broke both of Felix Ball's legs with the captain's hook. I, I believe that's actually how you got banned from Canada, if I remember correctly. Well, I broke both of his legs, but uh... Oh, wait a minute. A well, Felix calling for the tag and Chuck? Chuck looks like he wants it. He wants Felix in the match with him. Calling for Felix to get in the ring and... What, uh. what the hell? Chuck, get him, boy. he lured him in, lured him in, immediately got him yeah, in the captain's you gotta twist. wrenching on the No, leg. you twist counterclockwise, and you push the ankle back. At... Unfortunately. Oh, it's all right, all right, he's got to get his seat legs. That's right, Felix getting his way back, but ooh, Chuck still laying in those vicious shots. Trying his best to take advantage of his former trainer. I mean, let's not forget, I mean... Tibbs, I know he's your son, but Felix has had just as close of a relationship. He trained Chuck. He brought him into this wrestling business. And now it looks like Chuck with the strength just tossing him across the ring. Let me tell you something, Sills. Felix Ball didn't teach my son that. Uh, I did. All right, but wait a minute. Felix now just tossing Chuck away. And now just landed on him with the Luthez press raining shots down onto the face of Chuck. And now Felix just playing to the crowd at this point, but Chuck making his way back to his feet, getting that second wind as he pops him up onto that top turnbuckle. And Tibbs, I think your boy is on fire right now. Oh, of course, Sills. You know, since, since we reunited for our huge 
match at Wrestlepalooza this year. My son and I, we have been training together. I've been showing him everything that I know because he's finally able to accept it. And he's finally able to make the most of being oh, wait, a Tibbs. Wait, uh, Captain Zook once again wrenching and Felix is in the center of the ring right now. He's got him close to tapping. No, you've got to just rip wrong way. You've got to do it counterclockwise, push against the ankle and grab the Achilles. That's, that's 101 right there. All right. All right, Chuck going for a pin though. One, two. Oh, and Felix barely kicking out. Shibata's hand was about to hit the mat. Trying to pick him back up, but instead Felix, oh, just breaking the arm over the shoulder and laying in those vicious shots. And now he's got him by the throat for a massive choke slam in the corner. But wait a minute. I don't think he's done. I don't think he's done there as he tosses Chuck into that turnbuckle. And at this point, Tibbs, if you're the Dylan, what can you do? Your partner is being broken. He is being beaten in the center of the ring. What can the Dylan do at this point? Well, Sills, I think the Dylan is laughing, to be honest. If you hear him from the from the ringside, he's actually kind of enjoying it. <clears throat> All right, but wait, now Felix tossing Chuck into this corner. Oh, I think he was gonna try to tag in Lumberjack, but instead, Chuck takes him out with that big spear. One, two, ooh, Felix kicking out. It's all right, you still got control. You know you can't get him with the strikes. You're going to have to get him out of nowhere with a big move. You're going to have to make and it quick. It looks you like, Tibbs, that big move is here with a D. D. Tibbs in the center of the ring, rolling over the wrecking ball. Shibata, one, two, two. And Felix just barely kicking out, Tibbs. It's going to be a harder move with somebody. Felix ball size. Getting him up for a DDT like that. You see, it requires enough lift, and Ball is just such a dense man that it's hard to get the required lift to really put him away with that DD tips. That's right, and now what in the world? Felix just draping Chuck over the ropes, and oh, reverse Alabama slam to Chuck, and now he has tagged in the lumberjack just to finish the job, Tibbs. Oh, that's not looking good. It's Chuck, you gotta get back on your feet, boy. You can't let him control you for too long. It's just, it's gonna be over, buddy. That's right. It looks like Lumberjack was going for something, but Chuck reversing it with that massive clothesline, picking up the Lumberjack, and now tossing him into the other turnbuckle where Dylan is at, but instead opting to go for a clothesline. And Tibbs, I think he's about to set up for something. Set up for something big. Oh no, he was going for the DD Tibbs, but instead Lumberjack just picking him up, tossing him down, and now Dylan just trying his best, wailing at the Lumberjack. Oh, trying to distract him. Oh, wait a minute, move, wait a minute. Move. Oh, he got him! He got that hot tag, and Dylan is in like a house of fire, just wailing on the Lumberjack, going after Felix Ball. Oh, but unfortunately, Ball fighting back. And he's been tagged in, and now it is the Dylan and Felix Ball just trading blows in the ring, Tims. Amazing to see the Dylan towering over Felix Ball. That's right. I mean, the more amazing thing was seeing him in the ring with the Lumberjack. It's hard to see the Lumberjack on the same level as another person, but th that's just how tall the Dylan is. Such a lanky motherfucker. That's right, and unfortunately, Dylan trying to shoulder tackle Ball over, not realizing just how dense the man known as the Wrecking Ball is as he's grabbed by the throat once again, picked up and slammed to the earth by Felix. And now it looks like Felix a little bit exhausted, just trying to get trying to get that wind back. Oh, but now Tibbs, I think he's getting ready for it. Got him by the throat, picking him up. But wait a minute, wait a minute, Dylan! Reversing it with an arm drag, and there it is! There it is! The upper dicker from out of nowhere on Felix the Wrecking Ball! It don't matter how dense you are, motherfucker! Your and balls, they still hurt! And now he's tagged in, Charlie picked up Felix, and a boot of doom puts down the Wrecking Ball! And now, Charlie wisely, I think, trying to go after the Lumberjack. But wait, the Lumberjack's grabbed Chuck from behind. He's stopping him from going for the pinfall. And Dylan's come from behind and taking the Lumberjack out of the equation. Right, go on. 
Yep. A good call right there. It probably wouldn't have put him away. He just spent too much time in between that finish, that move, that absolute stunner. Oh, wait, move, wait. But... He's got him. Got him in the captain's hook. But no. Right at the ropes. Forced to call for it. But now I think Chuck's not done. Calling for Felix to make his way back to his feet. Always going for the Canadian, or for, I'm sorry, the DD Tibbs. I'm sorry, as it's now known. And now he's just getting that back wrenched on Chuck, being forced to crawl for the ropes. And now it looks like Felix wisely tagging in the Lumberjack. He is aware of that mental block Chuck has. As the Lumberjack, I think, possibly is about to try to end it. Pick it up. Oh, wait. Was going to go for the Lumberjack slam, but instead Chuck gets him up. And he's got him set for it. The D. D. Tibbs. Okay, good. I have to roll him into the middle. I think that should be good. Going for the pin. Dylan Ro wisely running defense. Oh, but the Lumberjack kicking out at the last second. Hmm. The Lumberjack's not an another good uh, contender that you probably wouldn't be able to put away with just one DD Tibbs. But let's... Oh, unfortunately, oh, yeah. I think I think this is the problem we're seeing at this point with Chuck. He's able to get the captain's hook locked in so perfectly, but he doesn't understand when you're facing off against a seven-foot redwood like that, he's going to be able to reach those ropes so easily, too. A lot of tactics have to go into getting a perfect captain's hook in, so you've got to really be in control of where your opponent is at any given point in time to be able to roll them through to put the hook on so they're not in range of the ropes. You get a good hook in, you grab them in the right place, you wrench at the right time, you will strain their muscles to the breaking point, and you will put them in so much pain that they will either have to tap out or they will oh, wait a minute, break wait a minute, their wait a muscles. Oh, Dylan is going for the upper dicker. Lumberjack getting the knee up. One, two. Oh, and Dylan kicking out at three. And Tibbs, I'll be honest, I think Chuck, I think Chuck was getting frustrated by all the rope breaks, opting instead just to bring in the Dylan, bring in the heavy hitter, but the Lumberjack's got him pinned to the mat right now. Oh, but Dylan kicking out. Of course, and you gotta think, compared to everyone else in this match, the Dylan is definitely the most fresh. All right, but wait a minute, Lumberjack trying to set up for something big, but Dylan fighting back with that huge elbow. And now, oh wait, Tossing him against those ropes. What in the world is the Dylan going for? Draping him over that middle rope. Big hanging DDT and the Lumberjack is bleeding, Tibbs. Oh, did you see how he got caught up in those ropes with those long legs? That's right. And there it is. The upper dicker. The Dylan, he had it scouted. He had it set up. He waited for the Lumberjack to be weakened. And he falls to the mat right in front of Chuck. Going for the pinfall is the Dylan one, two, three. All right, yeah. And Not Tibbs, that they are really wanted it, but they won. Well, Tibbs, I mean, let's not forget. I think Chuck was aware of who he had in that ring with him. Both of these men, they may not like each other, but they respect each other. And Chuck was aware that it wouldn't be a submission to take down the lumberjack. All it would take was one. Firm shot to the dick, and he knew only one man in that ring could provide that, and that's the Dylan. Very good setting it up to the Dylan. Great draping DDT, open the Lumberjack up, and then wham, bam, right to the nuts, just ended. That's right, and now there they are, both of them. Your son and the Dylan, one of the most decorated superstars in JWF history, and there it is! I don't think we'd ever think we'd see that. A handshake between the Dylan and Chuck Tibbs and Dylan's telling your son to play to that crowd and get his applause. Hello, everybody. This is everyone's favorite commentator, Silver Spoon, here to remind you that after the show, to go to Patreon. 
facebook.com slash a load of BS. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, the JWF and all the other BS Network programs exist because of listeners like you, because of our lovely patrons over at patreon.com slash a load of BS. For the price of a cup of coffee a month, you can support the JWF. You can support them good old fight boys. A uh, fun fiction, a load of BS. You can support the entire network for just a few dollars a month and of course you get access to our exclusive discord where you can help us make decisions you'll get shouted out on a load of bs every single week we got tons of perks waiting for you over at patreon.com slash a load of bs all right tibbs and now it is time for a match that's well i gotta say it's cross promotional but it is also going to be a falls count anywhere match as this man takes on the bad boy joey janelle who the bad bad boy and it looks like scotty actually teasing joey janella wearing that certified g shirt showing that he is <laughs> not going to back down from this fight <clears throat> i don't understand the context still but i I, it's really funny for some reason. That's right, but Scotty here with his tag team championship around his waist. The cash in the bag briefcase at his feet. That briefcase giving him an opportunity to challenge for the JWF championship whenever he wants. Now, Sills, it's different than uh, the Dynasty match earlier tonight where the whole Dynasty came out. For this match, it is just Scotty Moore. I'm a bad But there he is, Tibbs, the recent signee to AEW. It is the bad boy, Joey Janelle. Is he the one that likes them white clouds? Yes, Tibbs, he's the one who brought you the, uh, the big case of the white claws the other day, and you basically allowed him to have any type of match that he wanted, which is why you gave him this non-sanctioned Balls count anywhere match. Oh uh, yeah, he's a total bro, man. Fuck yeah. That's right, Joey. Joey kind of playing with the JWF crowd. I mean, let's not forget, this is not just a match of Joey versus Scotty. This is AEW versus JWF. He let me put his sunglasses on. It was nice. All right, Joey prepping in the center of the ring. Scotty Moore getting ready. And, oh, Scotty with a big kick to start things off. Going for a stop, but Joey with a kick of his own. Both of these men fighting off, both known for a vicious brawling style. And Tibbs, let me tell you something. This could get brutal very fast. Oh my God, just as I said that, Joey just tossing Scotty out of the ring and then, oh, went for a splash, but Scotty getting out of the way. Tibbs, what the hell are these two men capable of? death that's right scotty moore fighting back against joey but joey grabbing the arm hitting a big punch to the gut and now tossing him up the ramp and wait a minute joey has grabbed a sledgehammer taking things to the extreme just wailing on scotty moore oh big strike to the gut and then another one to the ribs you know so jojo um his friends call him Jojo, that's why I was confused earlier. <laughs> he came up and asked if I would let him have a chainsaw, and that was... It's unsanctioned, but honestly, I just can't let those in the building anymore, not after that 93 incident. That's right, but Scotty wisely still taking it to Janela. He's back at his feet, but oh, Joey fighting back, breaking at the knee, and now just whipping Scotty up onto our set, which is... Tim's, how the hell are we going to clean all this sand up? Dun, 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 dun uh, That's the that's the beach music, right? Oh yeah, beach music. Be bum, 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 bum. Because we're apparently at bash at the fucking beach for some reason, Tibbs. Listen, so my champion was dead until a few days ago, so I didn't actually get my annual beach vacation, so I had to bring the beach to me. That's right, now Joey once again taking Scotty, putting him on that that's got to be AstroTurf, Tibbs. That is not real. 
Oh yeah, we rolled that out earlier. I made the sand castle myself though. I'm real proud of it. All right, but ooh, Scotty with a big clothesline. And now Tibbs looks like he's setting up for it. That vicious move that's won him championships. The SMG, but Janela fighting back. But Scotty Moore now fighting back with a reversal of his own. Big slam to the earth onto the Astro turf. And now I think Scotty, once again, he knows all he's got to do is hit that SMG, but instead opting to go for a pin. One. Oh, and Janela kicking out at two. Hope they don't hurt my sandcastle. That's right. Now, oh, wait, Scotty with a pair of stereo super kicks to the skull of Janela. And now just taking the skull and, oh, my God, raking it into that rough AstroTurf. Joey could be blind at this point. That's got to hurt. That's right. Now, Scotty, once again, just unabashedly kicking at the head of Janela, who fights back and what in the... What the hell? Where's Janela going? Tibbs, what's going on? It, is he leaving? Does he have a plan? Oh, no. Oh, it looks like they... Oh. Huh. Oh, unfortunately, the plan seems to backfire as Scotty immediately hits that flatliner onto that wire covering, but Joey fighting back with a kick to the gut. And Tibbs, let me tell you something. I think this might have been a wise move from Janela. He's known to take things to the limit and look around him. There's chairs, there's trash cans, and he's already making use of the weaponry as he wails on the leader of the dynasty. You know, so I appreciate a good chair hit. How about four? Because that's what Janela's doing to Scotty Moore, the alleged bad boy of the JWF. I don't know why I didn't scout this guy earlier, Sills, to be completely honest. He's got some superhuman qualities that I'm just really into. That's right. Now picking Scotty up on his shoulders, walking over to that table. Joey looking for possibly a big... Drop him! Oh, no! Scotty fighting oh. back instead, wisely forcing Janela to stop him, but Janela with a big splash, avoiding the drop kick, and now he's picked up the trash can. Janela trying for something big, I think, waiting for Scotty to get back to his feet. What's on Janela's mind? What? Yeah. Put the trash can on him. Oh, kick him. Big kick through the trash can from Joey. Janela. And now Scotty fighting back, though. Trying his best. I mean, you got to think his head, his head can't be right after that. No, Sills, he's got to be, he's got to be rattled, but... This Joey guy, this Joey Janela, Jojo. You know, he's one of the few people I've ever met that has drank me under the table and wanted to fight afterwards. That's right. And I mean, much like he survived that night of drinking with Tibbs, he's surviving this onslaught of violence from Scotty Moore with flying colors. Picking up that. Matter of fact, Sills, the only other man who survived a night drinking with me is going to be in our main event. That's right. Meanwhile, Scotty landing a big DDT, picking up Janela. Oh, but Janela knocking him to the ground. Going for a kick. Both of these men, they're so well aligned with each other at this point. Meanwhile, Scotty trying to get Joey back to his feet. But wait a minute. Oh, my God. Scotty with a Canadian Destroyer. I don't think we've ever seen that out of Scotty Moore before. Didn't know he even knew that move. That's right. But Joey fighting back. And let's not forget, Joey is known to use that Canadian Destroyer in matches. Could be using it just to mock Janela. Prove that he is the true bad boy, which is what Scotty Moore has wanted all along. Oh, as he tosses Janela into that crate. And then in a second amount of crates as well. Went for the SMG, but he blocks it. Oh, went for it again. But Janela got out of the way and now going into the locker room to cause more havoc. Oh, I love this locker room. Hasn't changed since 1984. That's right. Now, Scotty. Oh, with a big super kick to Janela. Going for the pinfall as Scotty Moore. One, two. Oh, and at the very last minute, Joey manages to get that shoulder up, Tibbs. Oh, very close for this bad boy. I'm starting to like him more and more. That's right. I mean, in the past, Joey has proven that he is able to take a lot of violence. Oh, including a big super kick in a second. 
Joey Janela is throwing a super kick party on his own face and now Scotty setting up for an SMG but Joey blocking it once again and lands a Canadian destroyer of his own into a steel chair going for the pinfall one two oh and he kicks out at two. Oh, terrifying to think of this is happening in our locker room what where is everyone else? I'm not sure about that, Tibbs, but I mean, I, I gotta say, if I walked into the locker room and saw these two, if I saw this violence happening before my very eyes, I'd leave too. Even after all the horrid sights we've seen all night, this is continuing to surprise me, Sills. I'm very happy for being able to see this match. That's right. Now, Joey, once again, just picking up that trash can and oh my god you can see the dent in the can from where he just weared down scotty moore's ribs with it and now it looks like joey's trying for something big walking scotty towards that little cubby but scotty fighting back before joey could get off anything big mm -hmm. real back and forth these two have had a long time in this match what's gonna happen Oh, looks like an SMG is gonna happen. Joey Janela bleeding one, two. Oh, and he barely kicks out at two. Uh, what in the world is Joey Janela made of, Tibbs? Silves, if I, anything that I've seen can tell you that he's made of dreams, wishes, and extremely tough stuff. That's right, but I mean, Scotty Moore just caught him in midair with a chair strike and is now oh. Sending him into those little cubbies once again. I'm amazed at the punishment that this man can take. That's right. Scotty once again trying his best to humiliate Janela. Scotty Moore said he does not just want to win this match. He wants to prove that he is the true bad boy. And oh, he lands a second. SMG on Janela. It's all over, but Shibata. Shibata was struggling. One, and Janela kicked out. But Tibbs, let me tell you something. I think if that if that trash can didn't stop Shibata from getting in there, that would have been all over. I don't know, Sells. It was close. It was close either way. This is this is a hell of a match. That's right. Scotty Moore now taking him, whipping him into the um. So this is our locker room, Tibbs? Hey, Sills. <clears throat> yeah? Stop. Are you, you, so this is, oh, wait! What? Out of nowhere, Joey, with a, with a low blow, rolls him up. Shibata getting there to count the pin. One, two, oh, and Scotty Moore barely kicking out at two, Tibbs. You know, Sills, I, I'm seeing a real issue with Shibata just leaving the room after every pinfall attempt. Yeah, you'd think he'd stay in there with them. Oh, but Scotty Moore bleeding after the vicious flurry of punches from Joey Janela. And now Joey tossing Scotty, oh, right by the table. Look, I'm just a fan, okay? I, okay, Tibbs, we're just, so that logo's just up there. We're gonna ignore it. Draw no attention to it. I have to do a speech every night to say these are the worst. Oh, okay, I see, but, oh, wait a minute. Joey, Joey no. picking up Scotty for a power bomb, And, oh my God, look at the strength of Janela walking across the locker room to power bomb Scotty through a steel, steel wooden table, Tim. It's got both in it, it's all right, you're right. It's got all, it's got everything, Tibbs. Probably made of adamantium, I don't know. That's right, now Scotty getting tossed into that TV because Tibbs, I mean, let's not forget, you may like that brand, but Joey Janela's brand is AEW. Well, listen, Sills, once they get established, I'll start saying speeches about them too. How's that feel? Another Canadian destroyer from Janela who quickly slides in, Shibata. I guess was out getting a drink, but he's there. One, two. Oh, Scotty kicking out at two. I really think I need to talk with Shibata about backstage etiquette when things kind of get a little crazy, huh? I think so. Meanwhile, Scotty once again getting whipped into it. Now wait, Joey's got him. Oh wait, he's got him. Package, mile driver onto the concrete floor. But it looks like Janela's not done picking up Scotty. 
whose body is unmoving, Tibbs. Oh. All right. You got to wonder what it's going to take to put either of these men away. That's right. But wait a minute. Scotty getting tossed into that television once again. Oh, and Janela fighting back with a massive elbow. Both of them trading shots. Oh, but a big arm drag takes down Janela. And now Scotty with a flurry of kicks and a big knee to Janela. Oh, but wait a minute. Janela wisely pushing Scotty away, <laughs> tossing him into the TV. Going for the pinfall. Shibata, come on, man. One, two. Oh, and Scotty kicking out at two. And uh, Tibbs, Jan Janela's mad at this point. What do you think? I'm mad at this point, Sills. I, he should know better. Shibata has been a ring veteran for longer than you think. That's right, but wait a minute. He's tossed him. He's tossed him in. And now tossing him against the television with that prominent logo, but Janela says no with a massive spear, Tibbs. Scotty Moore's body is convulsing. It's been electrocuted. Janela is bloody. Going for the pinfall, Shibata running in. One, two, three, and Joey Janela has won. Ladies and gentlemen, the following event is scheduled for one clusterfuck and is set to occur in Birmingham, Alabama. Introducing first, he is the bearded man from the Badlands, the absolute Badlands, Scotty Moore! And in the other corner, sporting the modest plaid on plaid on plaid the man with the plaid crown the plaid is plaid on the plaid the man who knows nothing about wrestling and everything about plaid the late tenor i'm sorry was i supposed to do something there i thought this was just you two oh, no yeah, no I'll, that's dylan hey and dylan then, <laughs> and we are the fight boys and it's a show about professional and not so professional wrestling make sure to check us out because when you're a fight boy, you're a fight boy for life. All right, Tibbs. It is now time for a match that, I'll be honest, a match that deserves the main event spot as this man, Sam Adams, takes on Spider the Longhorn Lockhart in his last match. Been a while since we've seen Sam Adams, huh? That's right. Well, Sam paying tribute. Paying tribute to Spider Lockhart, wearing Spider's glasses, wearing the official Ribera Steakhouse jacket that he obtained with Spider on a recent tour of Japan. Oh, come on. Anybody can get that. But, Tibbs, let me tell you something. I don't, I don't know if Sam Adams knows the weight that's on his shoulders right now. The weight of having to retire a legend. Listen, Sills, I... Spider Lockhart and I have had our differences. He's one of the best of us. He's one of the men that has drank me under the table on more times than I care to admit. He is a fantastic personality. And he is great in the ring. And it would take a true legend to... take it. Spider. Those are butterflies, Spider. Spider. Spider paying tribute to his old look. Sam Adams said he wanted. He wanted the Spider Lock Heart of Old, not this new. Not, not the grizzled vet we had come to know. And Spider is giving us just that. This is the 80s Spider Lock Heart coming out to the ring and Tibbs. I'm pleased as punch to see it. Sills, let me just say that some things should be left in 1984. That's right, but I think for this night, Tibbs, this was the only way Spider was going to come out to this ring. Not unless he throws me $2,000 from under that fucking robe. Well, he did tell me before the show that that was a $2,000 robe. That's where the money went. God, darn it, darn it, darn it. All right, now both of these men locking up in the center of the ring. First time we've seen some actual wrestling begin a match tonight. Spider, Spider with a big headlock takeover. 
All right, this is some good Matt stuff. This is a good callback. These two are both children of their time. Even Sam Adams, he's a younger guy, but he knows the style, and I appreciate that. I mean, let's not forget, Sam Adams is a real throwback wrestler, but he knows how to use the classic techniques. He is also one of the biggest brawlers I've ever seen. Tossing him into the corner, and oh, big clothesline takes down Spider Lockhart. He's got that dangerous moveset, too. A moveset that I would say is only fit for a legend. That's right. Now, wait. Oh, wait a minute. I thought Spider had him, but Sam reversing. Going for a kick. Spider reversing. Both of these men trying their best to get some advantage in this ass-kicking contest, as Sam Adams dubbed it. Well, of course they are, so this is a This is a night to prove oneself. It, it, if Spider Lockhart loses his retirement match, I don't know. That's right, hard to go out on a loss, but Spider Lockhart seems determined to go out with the W. Beautiful snake eyes and big splash sending him to the ground, Tibbs. Going for the pinfall. One, oh, and Sam Adams kicking out at one. Mm -hmm. Sam Adams has got a lot more resiliency than you think. That's right, and now, ooh, tossing the arm to the ground. That's that, that legend style, work over the arms. Meanwhile, wait a minute, tossing him in the air. Big splash that Spider's been known for, that gorilla press. All right, picking him up, sidewalk slam, and Tibbs at this point, th this is classic Spider, it's all over from here. As he bounces off the ropes, Spider splash. Going for the pinfall, one, Two. Oh, I well, well, it appears that Sam Adams is. I don't know if he's. I don't know if he's gone into business for himself or what. But Sam Adams managed to survive a spider splash. And wait, uh, out of nowhere, a sobriety test. What? One, two. Oh, and Spider kicking out at two tibs. Sills, I've seen that combination from Spider Lockhart. Hundreds of times and the fact that somebody kicked out of it. it it's amazing. It's almost as if somebody told him to wait What? T -t Tibbs, this was his last match. What in the world? Sam Adams just going after spider Beautiful clothesline taking him down and now climbing to the top rope. Oh, wait, no No instead opting to toss him to the outside is Sam Adams punching off spider you know, Sills, I'm, I'm really happy I got to see this match. All right, but unfortunately, Tibbs, it looks like Spider Lockhart coming back, picking up Sam Adams off the ground. Big shot to the face. <laughs> now this is a fight, Sills. This is a real fight. <laughs> That's right, Tibbs. I mean, like, like Sam Adams said, he wanted, he wanted the Spider Lockhart of old. He wanted a real fight. And I think kicking out of that spider splash is gonna get him that fight he wants. Mm hmm A lot of people have a lot of respect for Spider Lockhart. I think that's, let's just say, muddled oh, wait, wait. their judgment. Sam, what are you, get away from our announce desk. Sam, what are you doing? No, it's fine. Keep going, bud. I don't know, because Spider now coming in, fighting back, hitting those big shots straight to the shoulder. Oh, and Sam Adams now bleeding. Come on, Spider, give it to him. Give it to me like I know you can. Oh, Sam Adams now fighting back, though. Tossing him into the table is the beer man. And now, Tim's are right. We got the best seat in the house. They're right on top of us. And wait, sobriety test through the table. Pop, pop, beer. <sighs> That's all I wanted tonight, Sills. That's all I wanted to see. These two going at it, giving their all, giving everything they got, leaving it all out of the tank. Selves, I wanted to see a true Hoss match for Spider Lockhart's retirement, and I have not been disappointed so far. That's right, now Spider getting tossed into that, that rail once again. Sam Adams just trying to bloody, bloody the former champ. And now Sam picking up Spider, and bouncing off the ropes, but wait. Oh no, going for some shots instead, but Spider fighting back. And Tibbs, let me tell you something. Oh no, he's got him, he's got him, but instead, 
DDT from Sam Adams. Oh, that could have been that was dangerous territory for Sam Adams right there. That's right, but oh, he's got him, taking him down with a Luthes press, raining down the punches, and he's busted open. He has busted open the Longhorn, and he's got him. Sobriety test. Going for the pinfall is the Beer Man. One, two, three. What? Spider Lockhart has a lot more fight in him than we thought, and he's got him up. Big slam to the earth. And my God, just Spider looking dumbfounded, trying to wonder what he could do next as Sam Adams makes his way back to his feet, staring up at Spider. And now he's got him up once again, picking him up. Gorilla press slam, bouncing off the ropes. Spider splash! Oh my God. Let's see that oh one God. more time. That's a lot to land on your back. Is he gonna? Oh no, instead, what in the world Spider doing? Oh, there we go, going for the pinfall. One. Two, two, Sam Adams, <laughs> Sam Adams is kicked out of two spider splashes and Spider Lockhart looks pissed, clothesline, picking him up, another gorilla press slam, and then there it is, another, wait, Sam, Sam, he got out of the way. The beer man, the beer man surprising all of us tonight, so In a big, Big chop to the outside from the top rope. Going after the beer man, but he reverses. A beautiful scoop slam from Spider Lockhart. Sends Sam onto the concrete, and now both of these men just trying their best to get in position, Dibs. So, I, I can't tell you just how surprised I am at this whole match. I, I, it has been an amazing feat. I guess there's a reason I put it last. That's right, now. Sam, Sam saying it's over, climbing. Oh, I thought he was gonna go on the top rope, but instead wisely picking Spider up. Oh, there it is, climbing to the second rope, and a big double X handle, bouncing off the ropes, giving the fingers to him, and then a big elbow drop. And Sam Adams is on fire, just looking for that little advantage that he needs, but Spider fighting back. I think he was trying to pick him up, but instead drops him down with a drop toe hold. And now there it is. He's got him up for it, Tibbs. Oh no, instead opting to go to the front. Show everybody that gorilla press slam. Oh, but wait a minute. He was going for the uh, going for the splash, but instead Sam Adams gets out of the way, bounces off the ropes, and he hits it. The sobriety test. Is he gonna do it? One, two, two. Oh my God, Spider, Tibbs, Spider just barely rolled over. Spider barely doing anything. Uh, he's, he's fighting on instinct right now, but look at that scoop slam. That's right, going for the pinfall once again. Oh, and Sam kicking out at one. And Spider, at this point, you gotta think he's disheartened. You gotta think he's disappointed. He barely even got a one count, but here it is, Spider Splash. He's gonna do it. Tibbs, this is a move we've seen him hit once in end matches in 30 seconds, and Sam Adams has already survived two of him. Going for the pinfall, and I gotta say, it's all over. One, two, <laughs> What in the world is Sam Adams made out of? Patriotism and beer, son. That's right, but now Spider, both of these men fighting against one another. Drop toe hold from the Spider. But Sam Adams rolling out of the ring wisely, getting back inside. But it looks like Spider's just taking him a breather. Spider looks broken, but there it is, tricking him into it. And, and Sam almost seemed, Sam didn't seem like he wanted that pin. Sam seemed sad about this. He hesitated, you can't hesitate, son. It's your time, you've gotta take it. Well, you say that, Tibbs, but let's not forget, Sam also knows this is 
the last time we are going to see Spider in a ring, but he nails him with the DDT. I think he's just trying to prolong the inevitable at this point. As he takes him, whips him into the turnbuckle, props him up on the top rope, and poor Spider Lockhart, he, he can't move, Tibbs. Uh, he's, he's at the end of his rope, to be honest, so the... Big superplex takes him to the center of the ring as Sam Adams gets back to his feet. And what in the world's Sam doing? Waiting for something big. Luthez press in the center of the ring, viciously punching the face. And you can hear him almost say, I'm sorry, I love you. Going for the pinfall is Sam Adams. One, two, three. My God, that's it. I... Tibbs. Oh, I can't believe we, it, Sills. We have just witnessed the end of an era as Spider Lockhart sails off into the sunset. But Tibbs, let's not forget, he didn't go easy. All right. Rest well, Arachnum. You deserve it. And the beer man, Sam Adams. You have earned this. Also, Spider, you better give me my money back. Damn it. And Tibbs, there he is celebrating, but you gotta think this is a bittersweet victory for Sam Adams. I mean, Spider Lockhart wasn't just someone to face in the ring. He was a friend. He was a mentor. They had partnered together. And you gotta think, Sam, th there's a part in his head that's that's sad for what he just had to do. Sills, I, I understand that more than you know. I, I would venture to say that after all we've been through, Spider Lockhart was like family to me. That's right, Tibbs, but I mean, let's not forget we've had some amazing matches tonight in addition to that. We saw Scotty Moore face off against Joey Janela in what was a brutal match. I mean, they went all around this arena. We saw the Hammerman face off against Blake Tanner. And I'm getting news right now. Apparently on the next episode of JWF War, Scotty Moore is going to respond to the actions of Shibata, tossing him out of the match during, during that brutal match. But of course, in addition to that, we got to see your son, Chuck Tibbs, team with the Dillon to face off and defeat the Canadian crew. And Tibbs, I know you had to have been proud of that. Well, of course I was, Sills. It was a it was a great match to watch my son just really put everything over on the Canada crew. And then the Dillon came in and cinched the deal. Proud of both of them. That's right, and then it, it was an opening match, but it was the main event in my eyes as the god of the JWF resurrected before our very eyes, taking on Honeypot in what was an absolutely devastating match. Brutality reigned between both of them. And Tibbs, let me tell you something. I am proud of Momoa Curry, and I fear the man who faces him next. What do you think? Aye, aye, Sills, I'll have to agree with that. New body, new outlook, do everything on the Moa Curry. He is truly ready to be a reigning, destroying champion. That's right, Tibbs. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see what happens next, you're going to have to check out JWF Monday Night War that can only be found on the Fight Boys podcast, found wherever good podcasts are available. So make sure to check that out. And just remember... This has been Summerfest. He's been Captain Tibbs. I've been Silver Spoon. This has been Summerfest. And we will see you next time. <laughs>